I'm Rhonda Massab from the West Island blog and my job is to connect you with the community and we have a very important election coming up on October 21. Federal elections for Canada. Milan Kona Mancini is a Beaconsfield resident and he is running for the Green Party and he is here to meet you. So let's Hello. let's jump right on in. How you doing? I'm good. How good. about yourself? I'm very good. Thank you. Glad People to hear. don't usually like swing it back to me much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what led you to jumping into politics? Uh, I've been involved with a lot of uh, non-governmental organizations and a large part of the work that we did with them was trying to get government to change their policies. So I figured, why am I trying to lobby the government to change policies when I could just be the government? There you, know, you go. And change the policies myself. I see that. You become the they. Exactly. I yeah. get it. Yeah. All right. So tell me a bit about yourself. Tell my followers why we should be looking at you for this election. Well, I'm... Uh, I'm a graduate from Concordia University in a, in, with a degree uh, in human environment with a minor in philosophy. So uh, it really, we, I dealt with a lot of urban planning, uh, ecological issues, how humans and, and the environment interacted, and then also philosophy, I feel like, is essentially what politics is, it's philosophy. Um, so I, I've, I've looked at a lot of different parties and a lot of different platforms, and I feel like the Green Party is the most ethical and, and consistent party that I've seen. And I just, I really, their message struck home to me. And okay. the urgency in which they want to act on climate change is definitely something that I wanted to be a part of. Okay. Um, and for myself, I mean, I'm just a voice for the people. You know, okay. I, I, well, I talk about my friend, I talk to my friends about politics all the time. And I'm always telling them, you know, you should be in politics. You, you never be heard the story, don't have no politics at dinner, politics or religion at dinner. The, those are the best conversation <laughs> topics, you know. <laughs> you're, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah. How will your past experience and skill set help move our community and our country forward for a better quality of life for all? So I think that uh, my experience working with these uh, non-governmental organizations has really shown me the desires on the ground in a non-political way and that uh, by applying political slant to these things that I can uh, really move things forward because I know the, the desires of these large organizations and even just people, even going door to door and talking to people, you know, I'm seeing this broken sense of community. You know, they, these people are, a lot of people are desperate for communication and it's really, you know, they, they, their day is made when just somebody comes to talk to them. You know, and I, I feel like being a part of that community and representing the community, I can really uh, make a difference. Okay. From your door-to-door -door experiences, from your going door-to-door -door campaigning, what do you feel is the concerns on the West Island? Number one is the environment, as I think uh, everybody's going to tell you. It's it's the environment, and I, I, we're seeing it in the platforms of all the parties. I think this is the first time. That every after 500,000 people collected in Montreal it, yeah I think we needed to at least look <laughs> yeah, at it exactly so with that being said there's a very real reality that we have um, poverty on the West Island yeah and how does that tie into we get that you're green mm -hmm. got the climate change part yeah I want to know what piece uh, how you're going to address the poverty that exists for sure we have Island. a very uh, easy solution which is guaranteed livable income so that means a, a guaranteed set of money that everybody gets a month. Every Canadian's going to receive in their pocket money to uh, to pay for their housing, to pay for their food. What, where would that come from? So we've got a uh, budget that's going to be balanced within six years. A lot of it comes from taxing these large corporations that are evading taxes. A lot of uh, international companies that come in and then take our money, Such essentially. As? Um, Airbnb, Amazon. Um, I was going for Netflix. Yeah, yeah, Netflix too. Yeah, definitely a lot of these large companies that just don't, uh, there is a, now a tax I think on Netflix, but uh, these other companies, yeah, okay. definitely. Um, they're, they're evading, you know, our laws by working outside and then using the digital realm. Okay. And I feel like the, you know, we're, we're really behind on digital things. Okay. <laughs> you know, the, the government, there's, this, there's the saying that the government's 20 years behind society. You know, at all times, and uh, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't. I didn't know what the internet was. <laughs> right. You know, and we need to create a digital policy. We need to create, you know, a way that uh, is going to protect our online citizens. You know, and not just from these companies that are coming in and avoiding taxes, but also your security and your information that's online. That uh, there's no Canadian digital media policy. No, and that that spills over into the media world. Yes. Like, exactly. how are you feeling about the fact that media? 50 million dollars is allocated from the federal government for media 
in the last two weeks. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think there should be more. I think there should be more of it put into media because of that. Um, essentially, there it's the advertisers. It's it's these big companies like Facebook that are taking the advertisers right. and they're profiting off of all these this you know money that would normally go to reporters. news, yeah, and yeah. reporters. And without that source of revenue, how can we get reliable and consistent reporting? You know, besides right. generous people like yourself. You but know. there is there is a there is a financial cost to this. Movie. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, you so know, it's, it's very. Uh, it, it, there does need to be change. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we definitely we have a model that's based kind of on the BBC modeling, where we we want to match the funding that the government gives uh, the English government gives the BBC. Okay. So we want to achieve that level, um, so that. You know, we we are guaranteed say uh, the report. Their reporters are safe. From. I mean, just throwing this out there really doesn't belong in this interview, but I think it'll be okay. What if Facebook and everybody was taxed, and that money went to the actual news outlets? Yeah, absolutely. That I mean, same tax, like yeah. without taxing the people, just yeah. Tax well, there's Facebook. we we uh, essentially that's what's going to happen, mm -hmm. right? Is okay. that a lot of this like. You know, it's it, if you. I, I heard a statistic. If you if you worked, if you made five thousand dollars a day, every single day of your life since when Columbus landed in America, you still wouldn't be a billionaire today. Okay. You know, so that and millions and billions are like there's vastly different, and there's people, there's companies out there that are making billions of dollars, and to take a small portion of that to you know fund poverty, to fund guaranteed livable income, to fund nationalized pharmacare. To me, that's not that's the ideal, you know, and that there shouldn't be this, you know, uh, isolation of wealth that isn't brought back into the economy. Okay. Um, if you could choose a minister position, what would it be? I mean, the environment is the obvious one. Um, I would have never guessed. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, there is actually a digital. Um, it's combined kind of with I think foreign affairs or something, but there is a digital government uh, ministry position. That I think is pretty interesting because the digital realm is very interesting to me, um, and like I said, there's no digital media, digital, digital media policy, so yes. something we need to get on immediately. Desperately, um, and I think it might be a bit too late for you and I for the information that's out there, but we need to protect, you know, the future. Our, yeah, well, exactly. Protecting the media protects democracy. Yes, absolutely. It's a you know, if we start getting paid to write, you know, human interest stories or or this kind of news. It's going to be dangerous. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Agreed. How can Canada better manage its immigration policy, and how does that impact the West Island? So I heard in your previous interview that um, you know that there's this immigration is going up and poverty is going up, but we need to bring in uh, people. You know, the, the Canada Canadians are not replacing themselves. Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and New, New Nova Scotia last year would have all lost people. They would have had a net zero, a net uh, a negative population due to um, uh, just people not replacing themselves. And with immigration, thankfully, we've we've brought up those numbers to positive uh, population numbers. Um, yeah, so uh, addressing the immigration, we want to eliminate the third uh, Safe Third Country Act with the United States um, because people aren't necessarily feeling super safe there anymore, and that we need to process them like. As if they, however, they feel like they need to be processed. If they, if they fall under the categories of refugee, then we should treat them as such. And uh, on top of that, we really need to put a lot. How do more... we support them financially? That's thirty-five thousand dollars a year. I think I've got the numbers right for an immigrant yeah. to come. For sure. So we're not meeting that. Yeah. We're not meeting those demands financially. Yeah. That's why I'm increasing in my food drives, mm -hmm. and there's more poverty in the streets of the West Island, particularly. Yeah, it, it takes a few years for um, somebody to become established, but we see so many success stories of people bringing business, bringing money. You know, there's we not just that, but they bring outside income. So we're instead of just circulating Canadian money within Canada, we're actually bringing in wealth from other places. So while they do, some people do take a little bit of time to get established. There's a lot of people coming in with money that they're spending in Canada on Canadian taxes and things like that. But uh, it's definitely. I wouldn't say it's the immigrants. I think that it's it's these large corporations that are exploiting our labor and hoarding the taxes and hoarding the money and things that we should be putting back into Canada. Okay. 
now you've got a few thousand people watching you. What would you say to a few thousand people at once who are heading to the polls on October 21st? Because you're heading to the polls on October 21st. So what would you say? I'd say I'd love a vote. I'd love it if you vote for me. But even if you don't, please vote regardless. Thank you. Have a great day. You can follow all the election coverage on the West Island Blog Facebook page and the YouTube channel. You just have to hashtag elections2019. See you at the polls. Bye.